Hi David, Hello. thank you for your time for the interview. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, uh, maybe everybody knows that uh, you started with yoga in 1975. Uh, 1969. 1969? Yes, Alright. I started yoga in 1969. Uh-huh, and it was Hatha Yoga Ashtanga? Yeah, it, it was Hatha Yoga. Uh -huh. Ashtanga Yoga really wasn't in the West yet. Okay. And so we learned from books, wherever books we could find. My brother and I, I was in Texas, we would practice outdoors in the park. Mm -hmm. It was a fun, you know, people were so uncertain about this, they would call the police if they saw us doing yoga. Oh, really? Once police cars actually came, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did they ask? They thought we were worshipping the devil. Oh. <laughs> because we had long hair, we were under trees, you know, doing our yoga. And it was odd for people to see this kind of activity in Texas at that time. I see. So, um, but it made us feel good. We practiced outdoors, felt close to nature, the breathing helped feel good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but that's how I started. Then I, I learned about Ashtanga in 1973 mm -hmm. from David Williams and Nancy Gogoff. I see. They brought Patabi Joyce to the U.S. Mm -hmm. in 1975. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And that's when I met him. Oh, okay. But there was, a, yeah, there was a journey before I met him with my own practice and from books and then David and Nancy, and then finally Patabi Joyce. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have tried the other approaches, other schools, uh, other than Ashtanga? Yeah, I've been to a lot of other kind of uh -huh. methods of yoga and other classes. Mm -hmm. I like to check it out. I see. But whenever I come back to Ashtanga, it feels like home to me. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy it. But I have an open mind. I'll try other things. Uh -huh. So and wh why do you keep on with Ashtanga? Makes so me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I like the routine. I like the feeling. I like, like I said, it. Even from the first day I did it, it felt like I came home. Uh -huh. It wasn't so easy physically, but I really enjoyed it. It gave me an energy and a feeling inside, and I thought, wow, I like this. Mm -hmm. And I still have that feeling, yeah, I enjoy it. Oh, great. And so I've, been, I've tried all kind of other, other things, other classes, but for, for me personally, it just, I don't feel quite the same as when I do my Ashtanga practice, but I know it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't say it's the best yoga, I just happen to like it. Yeah. And if someone else likes it, I'll share information. I think it's really important that people find the yoga that, that makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you know, there's so many choices. Yeah, there are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a recommendation to, to practice Ashtanga or whole series six, six times a week, like six days a week, do, do you do it? Like whole series? Or? Well, you know what though, it's really, it sounds like it's six days a week, but if you really look at the system, it averages out to about five days a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Traditionally, it was practiced Sunday to Friday, mm -hmm. no practice Saturday. Yeah. But then we also take away the moon days, mm -hmm. full moon and new moon. Yeah. Generally, that doesn't fall on a Saturday. So that means now that's five and a half days. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Then for women, there's no practice during menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. So if you take those days away, and yeah. so, and there's also sometimes holidays or something. So it really averages out to maybe five days a week. Oh, I see. Is in the strictest sense. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. But it's like anything. People have to find the practice that, that works in their life. It yeah? makes them feel good. And so maybe they want to practice, or maybe they can only practice three times a week. It's okay. You don't have to say six days or nothing. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to say the whole series or nothing. Even Patabi Joyce. He used to say minimum daily practice, three Surya Namaskar A, three Surya Namaskar B, and the final three postures of closing sequence. Mm -hmm. That would take 10 minutes. Even he understood not everyone will be able to do the whole primary series. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So it's important to understand too, that you can use this yoga as a tool in your life. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the whole sequence or first and, or second or whatever it is you're working on, great. But you also have the option of, of doing less and still getting great benefit. Mm -hmm. And what about you? Well, you travel I, also, a lot I travel a lot, yeah, I primarily do f first series and, and second series, uh -huh. but um, with my lifestyle, yeah, it's a lot of traveling around, I'm in a different city a, a, a lot, and so I practice alone in a hotel room or something mm -hmm. many times, mm -hmm. oh, but it's okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, I like what I do, but mm -hmm. it's a, a kind of a commitment to that life on the road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not conducive so much to just developing a personal practice, but I mean, many, I've been to Mysore many times, I've practiced with Patabi Joyce, mm -hmm. um, but once you have the practice, I think there's a freedom. 
that you can just do your practice wherever you are. And mm -hmm. I, I, that's something else I love about it. You know? yeah. you, if there's no class, you can just get on your mat, or even if you don't have a mat, you get on the floor and you do your practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you practice at least this, this three, three Surya Namaskara A's and B's every day? And yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sometimes you do more, but you mm -hmm. always have the minimum amount you can do. Mm -hmm. So it, it, otherwise, I travel so much and teach so much that if I don't keep a thread of connection with the practice, you lose it. You lose yeah. the juice. Mm -hmm. And then the teaching just becomes a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But as long as we're practicing, we still gain insights and we gain a feeling of it and we, we keep getting the benefit and so there's always something to share. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So when uh, there is somebody who doesn't have a time for a whole series, would you recommend to, or he has, um, there's enough, of, uh, not enough of time, like let's mm -hmm. say one hour uh -huh. or 40 minutes, uh -huh. would you recommend to either uh, to do whole, let's say primary series, uh, like faster, <laughs> faster bring, or to do just some of the poses? Or I don't do recommend doing it really, because you'd have to it'd be like a speed yeah, yeah. race. Yeah, because some, some people, I know some people who say, okay, I do it in 45 minutes, no yeah. problem, but the breathing is not... No, I think it's not, not correct then. Uh -huh. um, I would say practice the normal speed mm -hmm. and do as much as you can. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I created short forms routines. I have a 15, yeah. a 30, and a 45 minute, but I just called them yoga short forms. I didn't call them specifically Ashtanga because I left some postures out and things, but with I the see. idea that I still address the sequence because they're groups of postures if mm -hmm. you look at them. Mm -hmm. It's little families. Yeah. You have Parangustasana, Parahastasana, Uttita Trikonasana, Parvita Trikonasana. Nice. So moving through the families, maybe sometimes I would just take one of those to present a, a sort of holistic approach for someone that doesn't have time to do mm -hmm. the whole thing. And then once they're able, if you have 45 minutes, you can do half of the practice. You can go all the way up to Marichyasana and do the closing sequence, you know, mm -hmm. if you have that much time as well. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So it really depends, but I wouldn't recommend just getting on your mat and racing <laughs> through. Yeah, yeah. Are you uh, just practicing the asanas or you do pranayama as well or the other parts of yoga? Well, in Ashtanga we're taught asanas and pranayama. Mm -hmm. And the, the bigger picture of the eight limbs is how we interact with the world around us after we do our asanas or mm -hmm. our pranayama. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bigger practice is when we step off of the mat and how we, we deal with the rest of our, our day and our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this Ashtanga yoga, sometimes people say we're only doing asanas and pranayama. Mm -hmm. But the yamas and the niyamas are personal choices in life. I think this starts to happen and an unfold, mm -hmm. even if we aren't aware of it. Mm -hmm. You see, when people start practicing yoga, things start to change. We become more yeah. aware of foods we're eating and, and things that make us feel good and things that don't make us feel good. Our choices become more holistic because we're making life choices around the idea of supporting our practice of yoga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I believe that the eight limbs, the potential for their presence is right there within the practice we're doing every day. Mm -hmm. If you look at, there's things like the ahimsa or nonviolence, and there's, there's training of all of this in how we do our asanas as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we have to compartmentalize and say, now I'm being physical, now I'm being energetic, now I'm being spiritual, now I'm being philosophical. Yeah. Once someone asked Mahatma Gandhi, what is your religion? His answer to that person was this. He said, you follow me around. You come and live with me. Mm -hmm. See the clothes I wear. See the food I eat. Hear the words from my mouth. See how I interact with other people. And so that's what I believe that real yoga is. Mm -hmm. it, there's the practice on the mat, but the bigger picture is everything else in the day. Yeah. yeah. Where do you get your inspiration for your lessons and workshops? You read some... Uh, text or deeper texts or books or which you mean practice. in the way that I teach uh, in yeah, my yeah. teaching um, no, I got the inspiration also. from the practice first mm -hmm. and then from other teachers and, and the teachers I've enjoyed the most were fun Patabi Joyce was fun he brought a joy to the practice mm -hmm. teachers I found the most inspiring they had a joy in their heart and in their eyes and in their their voice yeah you could mm -hmm. feel they loved what they did Mm -hmm. And so I've always felt that to teach, we should teach from joy and love and compassion. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I do. I bring that in. I try to bring a, a voice from the old school, the old world of teaching, which was, was that. Mm -hmm. It was about a camaraderie and a joy for the practice and a, 
and an appreciation and, uh, for the fact that we even get to do this yoga mm -hmm. and the fact that we get to teach it. Yeah? Yeah. So it's a, it's a special opportunity. And so the inspiration comes from the wonder of yoga itself mm -hmm. and the, the, the feelings I've gained from practicing it. And then I just try to share that in the best way I can from stories or from analogies or sometimes if somebody wants to know some technical thing, I try to figure it out in my head and break it down and just share what I learn. I see. Cool. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, possible, let's say, to do uh, a real yoga, like in daily life, or you need to go for seclusion and to go away from other people to some cave or, yeah. you know, like this? I think if you choose to stay on, the, stay on the real world or go to the cave, both are difficult. Yeah, they are. To really practice yoga is difficult. But Tabi Joyce would say yoga is not easy. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't just talking about it's not easy to touch your toes or yeah, get your legs behind your head. It's the bigger picture. But one reason yogis would go to the cave is they felt it's too difficult to try out in the world because mm -hmm. there's so many distractions. So they would try to separate from all these other distractions and strip away everything except bare necessities to try to control the mind. Mm -hmm. But I've always felt that the greatest application of yoga, or the greatest yogi, is one that can live their yoga and apply it and move right through the midst of chaos and everyday life without it disturbing their mind. Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest yogis I know, using that term people like to use so much, you won't even know they do yoga. Maybe no one else in their family does yoga. They mm -hmm. get up early morning, they do their personal practice, they get their kids to school, but they're patient with their kids, they, they interact with people during the day in a nice way. And to me that's the bigger yoga. Mm -hmm. There's a definition of a yogi that I like and it's this, a yogi is one who leaves a place a little nicer than when they arrived. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that one, I don't believe that yoga is only a, a selfish pursuit. Mm -hmm. I mean, just go off and, and gain everything just for ourselves yeah. and not share it. I think that we have a responsibility and to share positive things. Yeah. So if yoga really is positive and we feel good, I think it's nice to share with other people, someone else that's interested. The world needs positive attitudes, positive energy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of negativity, there's wars, there's violence, there's difficulties, yeah? And so yoga is just one more tool that can give a positive effect and a positive light on the world. Mm -hmm. So those that are able to take the yoga right into their life and into their family and into the world, I believe it's a great service. But it doesn't mean it's easy. I see. But I give great respect and I bow down and say thank you to all the people that held the practice for so many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's popular or not popular, people dedicated their life to, to doing this yoga and sharing the yoga, and I'm one of the people that benefited from people like that. So I feel it's part of my, my duty, but also my joy and honor to be able to share yoga with people. Mm -hmm. And I get energy from it too. I, I get like meeting people like you. I meet wonderful people all over the world. People tend to have a positive attitude. or They're trying to improve themselves. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. And uh, last question is, uh, do you have any core message or any key recommendation for people or maybe for practitioners? For practitioners yoga? of yeah. yoga. You know, people ask me to sign books and things sometimes and I give the, the same message a lot. I, I say, have fun practicing. But the reason I say this is, if we enjoy what we did today, we'll want to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because if you had fun practicing, if you enjoyed the practice, you'll keep practicing. Yeah. So I think that's the best advice I've got because the real guru is the practice itself. Mm -hmm. To me, a guru is not just a person. The teacher, the teacher's duty is to encourage, to inspire, and to facilitate practice for the student. Mm -hmm. And to teach them everything they know about the practice. The yeah. real learning is going to come from their practice and their own journeys in life and their trials and errors and the yoga is going to give them this tool of strength to carry on in a very clear manner. And so the greatest message I have is enjoy your practice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much David. Thank you. It's been my pleasure and an honor Thank to you. be here. Thanks Thank a lot. You.